those are sort of the sucky words, but we use them because we need to express the challenges that happen in our ASPEC community. <laughs> Welcome to the space on the internet. You clicked on the video, you know that this video is about aspec vocabulary. Aspec referring to the aromantic and asexual spectrums. Also, pardon my speech, I just had mouth surgery, so sorry. It's gonna sound weird. That's fine though. So yeah, maybe you're new to the queer community, or perhaps new to the asexual and aromantic communities specifically, and we call this the aspec community. Aspec meaning a spectrum, which includes all aromantic and asexual spectrum identities, and you know, like, arguably agender identities as well, although I will be focusing specifically on sexual orientation and romantic orientation, as in the case of asexuality and aromanticism. My credentials, I suppose, I identify as asexual and aromantic. Romantic, and I will be doing my best in this video to include vocabulary relevant to those all across the aromantic and asexual spectrums, the A spectrum. And if you've watched this video all the way through and feel as though I've missed something, let me know. Put it in the comments and hopefully people will look down there and you'll have informed them even more on this sort of thing. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that me and my fellow Spacey Aces, who fuel this channel through garlic bread and cake, are hoping to do a Q&A. Q Q I'm really sorry. Q&A, where, you know, you ask us questions, we respond. So if you enjoy our videos and want to interact with us more directly, here's your shot. I am not throwing away my shot. You are not throwing away your shot. I am Hamilton Geek. If you want to interact with us more closely or are just genuinely curious about us, even if this is the first video you've watched, welcome. You can ask us questions. So yeah, you can do that in the comments of this video, you can do it on the community post I've just made, or you can do it on our Instagram page. Ask as many as you'd like. Obviously we will only be answering appropriate questions, but some themes that we are very open to talking about are asexuality, aromanticism, queerness in our experience, the queer or a 2 LGBTQIA plus community, books, TV shows, movies, gay ones in particular, mental health, neurodivergence, and disability. Um, and I say that because I self-identify as autistic for very good reason, and if you want to ask me about that, I'm down to tell you about it. Just general lifestyle things would be down to tell you about, or really just anything that you want to ask us, anything you want to know. So to recap, comment on this video, comment on our YouTube community post or comment on our Instagram to ask us questions. Thank you. Now let's learn some aspec vocabulary. I'm going to take the grand leap that you, the viewer, understand what sexual and romantic attraction are. Sexual attraction being the desire to interact sexually with a person and romantic attraction being the desire to interact romantically with an individual. What sexual and romantic attraction look like in practice will differ from person to person and what these do look like in practice can be influenced greatly by cultural norms wherever we are in the world and whatever our life experiences are and the people around, you know? Just all of it. Okay, so let's do the basics. We're going way down to the fundamental vocabulary of the A spectrum. Asexual. Asexual is a sexual orientation wherein someone feels little to no sexual attraction. Pretty simple, hey? It's also used to describe someone who identifies as asexual. You could say, for example, the asexual entered the room. If I enter the room, you can say, and the asexual entered the room. Asexual is also used as an umbrella term for many different identities under the asexual umbrella, and it is often phonetically shortened to ace. So asexual? Ace. Ace. And that's ace as in, like, the playing card. Aromantic. What does aromantic mean? Aromanticism is an orientation wherein someone feels little to no romantic attraction. It can also be used to des describe someone who identifies on the aromantic spectrum or as aromantic. Once again, it's an umbrella term for many different micro identities on the aromantic spectrum or aerospec identities, and it is commonly shortened to aero, as in like bow and arrow. Allosexual. Someone who is allosexual is someone who does experience sexual attraction. It describes someone with an orientation that is not on the asexual spectrum. That could be something like straight, gay, bi, pan, omni, you know, all of them. Alloromantic. Which again, opposite of aromantic, describes someone who does experience romantic attraction and does not fall on the aromantic spectrum. What is the aromantic spectrum? I've been referring to it an awful lot, but I'm just going to put it plain and simple for you. In the words of Aurea, the aromantic spectrum union for recognition, education, and advocacy. So Aurea, as I will refer, refer to them in this video from now on, has supplied many of the definitions that I'm using here, and you should definitely check them out. Their link is actually in our channel description, as well as the Avon link, which is the Asexual Visibility and Education Network. So the 
aromantic spectrum, as Aurea puts it, is an umbrella term for all aromantic orientations, which emphasizes the diversity from no romantic orientation to non-normative romantic orientation or experience with romance, often abbreviated to aerospec. Aerospec is also used as a specific identity term describing someone who experiences conditional, unreliable, or otherwise non-normative romantic attraction, but does not label it further. And you can flip this around for the asexual spectrum, shortened to aspec, and it's all the same stuff. Just everyone who identifies as asexual, either in a way that they're simply not normatively sexual, or they experience some sexual attraction, no sexual attraction, um, and it acknowledges the diversity of all of those different experiences. Now that we've covered the basics, here are some more specific vocabulary to articulate the specific struggles of asexual and aromantic people. So there's this thing called acephobia, um, it's otherwise known as aphobia but I think that's a lot less specific because a is simply the prefix to mean like not or none. Aphobia doesn't sound like what it means so I prefer to use acephobia and acephobia is the hatred, dislike, prejudice, or bias towards or against asexuality and those who identify as asexual. It's basically the asexual equivalent of homophobia though I will say that it more closely resembles something like biphobia which is the prejudice against those who are bi attracted to two or more genders because in the case of acephobia someone's identity is more likely to be downplayed or more implicitly judged as opposed to inflated in the case that we often see gay people. These implicit biases are still very harmful to asexual people and bisexual people. Then the aromantic equivalent is something called aerophobia, although from my reading I've derived that aromigia, aromisia, however you might say that, is a better word for aerophobia because phobia is actually a clinical term and using it in the, these contexts of a prejudice against people is inaccurate as phobia actually is like a clinical diagnosis and heavily affects people's lives. Of course, homophobia, biphobia, panphobia, those all very much affect people as well, but it's not the same thing, obviously. So aerophobia or aeromegia um, is the hatred, bias, or dislike of aromantic people or aromanticism in general. Again, the aromantic equivalent to like homophobia and it often manifests in the form of a madonormativity. A madonormativity, I've made a whole video on it so please watch it. I go really in depth on what madonormativity means and its implications. Basically in short form it is the widespread assumption that the end goal for every single person is a very societally perpetuated family structure, a very particular form of monogamous romantic sexual love and that you will only find happiness through that form of living. And finally, singleism. As Aurea puts it, it is the stigmatization of or discrimination against people who are single, which is very real. It's also sort of a part of a metanormativity, which I cover in my video. So those are sort of the sucky words, but we use them because we need to express the challenges that happen in our ASPEC community. So now we're going to go into words that describe people's different experiences with attraction, different types of attraction, and those sorts of words. Tertiary attraction. Tertiary attraction is any form of attraction not categorized as being romantic or sexual. It's also used as an umbrella term to encompass many of the different types of attraction I'm about to list off. Note that we will hopefully be making more videos about different types of attraction because it's a very important concept in the ASPEC community in general, and also very relevant to mine and my fellow YouTubers' lives. So first, aesthetic attraction. And that's basically where you feel attracted to someone's aesthetic, how they appear visually maybe their facial features, etc. Then there's sensual attraction, which is the attraction that comes from desiring like a closeness, um, a physical closeness with somebody, and it is not romantic or sexual. Though it can come with those other types of attraction, it is a distinct type of attraction that simply involves non-sexual forms of physical intimacy. There's platonic attraction, which a lot of us have experienced probably. It's the strong desire to form a friendship with someone. Then there's altruist attraction. This is the form of attraction that often falls between romantic, platonic, and other other forms of attraction in a way that is oftentimes hard to discern as a person feeling altruist attraction. Sometimes altruist attraction is deemed for an individual significant enough to become part of their label and identity. For example, I have called myself before pan altruist, meaning I am altruistly attracted to people regardless of their gender identity. There's emotional attraction, and another more specific term is extramo attraction. You can look it up, I don't know how to say it properly, I'm sorry. But emotional attraction is a desire to be emotionally close to someone, emotionally intimate with someone. And in the case of extramo attraction, this is entirely apart from sexual or romantic orientation 
gratification. So it's a specific desire to be emotionally close with someone without romantic or sexual aspects. Whereas emotional attraction is just a more broad way and it can come with more romantic and sexual elements. So we're all familiar with the word crush, right? Now let me inform you of a few cool alternatives for the word crush as it relates to non-romantic scenarios. So having a smush is a strong desire to interact sexually with someone and is characterized by sexual attraction. Then there's a squish, which is associated with platonic attraction, otherwise known as like a platonic crush, where you don't want a romantic relationship with this person necessarily, but you do have a strong desire to be friends with this person, oftentimes in a way that is very focused. Squish is also used as a catch-all for a lot of different types of non-romantic crushes. Then there's a mesh, which is associated with alterous attraction. It's the alterous equivalent of a crush. It describes a strong feeling of alterous attraction or an alternative type of attraction that is sort of romantic, sort of platonic, and you can't really tell. And finally, there's a lush, which is associated with sensual attraction. It's the sensual equivalent of crush and often involves a strong desire to be physically close to someone in a non-sexual way. Then there's this little thing called an oriented arrow ace which basically describes someone who is both aromantic and asexual, aerase, but experiences a form of tertiary attraction such as the one I've listed, and that type of tertiary attraction is significant enough to impact th their identity and how they choose to label themselves. For example, you could be an omni-oriented aerase, meaning that you feel a tertiary sort of attraction to all genders. Similarly, you could be gay aerase meaning you experience a tertiary type of attraction towards those of the same gender. Oriented aero-ace is a term that was initially intended to be used for people who identify as like fully aero-ace, as in they have not and will never experience sexual or romantic attraction. So there is an alternative that is less exclusive in that way, though I wouldn't hesitate to use it since it's the most commonly known one, and that term is called angled aero-ace. So it's the same thing as an oriented aero-ace, someone whose tertiary attraction plays a big enough part in their identity to warrant a label, but it is meant for people who simply fall in the asexual and aromantic spectrums as opposed to being like fully asexual and aromantic. So even if you do experience some attraction or irregular attraction, you can still use the term angled aerase. Now, let's delve into some terms that are used to articulate a lot of the non-normative queer aspects of the A spectrum. A lot of these are just used in general among queer people and queer communities. They become especially relevant in contexts where they're aromantic or asexual or both. So the first is touch aversion, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a feeling of being uncomfortable or repulsed by physical touch, and this can vary from person to person in severity, as well as differing between situations that you could be touch averse in one scenario and less touch averse in another, and maybe you're completely not touch averse in some situations. My favorite word, words, it's two words, it's relationship anarchy. I do want to make videos just about relationship anarchy in general. It's just the best concept to my brain. So as Aurea puts it, it is the belief that no kinds of intimate relationships are superior to others despite some being more highly valued in society, opposed to metanormativity and not specific to aromatics. So I like to sort of define this as like a disregard for the popular idea that there's a specific way relationships should be and there's a specific way or a right way for relationships to be and to have value for you. Now we have something called a queer platonic relationship, also known as quasi-platonic relationship. The sub in quasi is largely due to the fact that queer being a reclamation, a lot of people are not comfortable with it or simply does not apply to them, they might not identify as queer. Because you can begin a queer platonic or quasi-platonic relationship without identifying as queer. It simply means that uh, you are in a relationship that falls outside of the typical expectations or standards of a romantic or platonic kind of relationship. Maybe it's sort of in between those, ambiguous, uh, it's just not a normative relationship. And guess what? I'm in one, I'm in a queer platonic relationship me, with one of my fellow spacey aces named Kaden, and we made a whole video about it, so if you want to hear more information about queer or quasi-platonic relationships, watch that video. Soft romo. This word describes a low-level romance, so being in a romantic relationship or having a, some form of romance that is very like low-key, kind of falls between like queer platonic and romantic, it's very like low romance. Note that low level does not imply lesser, because romantic things are not worth more than not romantic things. Romantic relationships are not worth more than non-romantic relationships. They're just different. Non-amorous or non-partnering describes someone who does not 
ever want to establish a significant relationship with another person in any way so not sexually not romantically maybe not even platonically i'm sure it depends from person to person it just means you don't really want a specific partner I'm sure you've heard this one before polyamory if you haven't it describes one's involvement in multiple intimate relationships with the consent and knowledge of everyone involved polyamory is an umbrella term for a variety of different polyamorous structures for example there's something we call poly affectionate which is one explicit way of saying i'm polyamorous but not in a way that is strictly romantic or sexual meaning you may have relationships that fall outside of the bracket of romantic and sexual again it's still like polyamory still multiple partnerships multiple relationships multiple intimate relationships with the knowledge and consent of all involved now we have something called being very oriented which means your sexual and romantic orientations like don't necessarily line up as in you might not have the same gender preference or way of experiencing an attraction romantically and sexually basically this can also mean like prefixes for your labels don't line up for example you could be a bi-romantic asexual or a demi-romantic pansexual just means different as opposed to peri oriented which means the same and that's when someone's romantic and sexual orientations do line up and oftentimes do have the same prefix so that would happen in the case of being for example demisexual and demi-romantic or being a lesbian in both the sexual and romantic sense now let's explore some like offbeat more funky niche terms that you're probably not familiar with and if you are probably because you've done research on this already let's get into it an aromate is basically a soulmate but not romantically it's someone who fulfills the role of a soulmate but not romantically which I'm guessing is often used among aromantic humans a waver ship as Araya puts it, it is a relationship that fluctuates or is fluid between different kinds of relationships. Ace gender is a gender identity wherein someone believes or feels that their gender identity is largely influenced or tied to their asexuality or identity on the ace spectrum. Similarly, there's aerogender, same thing, wherein someone feels that their gender is strongly tied to their aromanticism or orientation on the aromantic spectrum. Aplatonic. I'm going to use Aria's definition because I'm quite new to this concept. Aplatonic describes a person who experiences little to no platonic attraction. This means that they rarely or never experience squishes, which are strong desires to form a friendship with a particular person. A platonic often describes neurodivergent aroaces who struggle to form relationships with any kind of people. In the queer community, neurodivergent specific terms are quite common. There's a plethora of different neurodivergent specific terms. I can make a video on it if you want, because they're really interesting, because oftentimes, though not always, neurodivergent people will experience gender and sexuality and other aspects of queerness. Differently. And this last one isn't obscure or anything. I just wanted to go out with some positivity. And this is a more general one that a lot of queer people are familiar with. A lot of people in general are familiar with, but it is a very important thing in the queer community and subsequently the ASPEC community. And that is chosen family, which describes the close bonds someone chooses to share with those who are not biologically related to them. And in essence, they build a family of their own accord, which is really beautiful and oftentimes very important for ASPEC people because they might feel pretty particularly in the shadow of a normativity, that their relationship desires don't align with what has been expected of them their whole lives, so they have to form different types of relationships and strong platonic relationships in particular, and that can look like chosen family. Thank you, lovely humans. Reminder, we're gonna do a Q&A! So please leave us questions in the comments on our community post or on our Instagram and we will answer them because why not? That's fun. Definitely go watch more of our videos if these terms intrigue you because we do use them. A lot of them are quite commonplace in our videos. Others, like the more obscure ones I've just mentioned, are less common. But a lot of the words that I've mentioned here are very important vocabulary to expressing our ideas on our YouTube channel. So if these are interesting to you, we have more thoughts on these sorts of things all over our channel. Okay, thank you lovely humans. We will see you soon. Bye! Love you!